In this video, we'll talk about viruses and how they exploit glycan molecules to invade our body. I am Philippe Lemercier, a molecular biologist, and I am with... Frédéric Lissacek, and I am a glycoinformatician. In the first part of this video, we'll talk about uh, the impact of glycan on vaccines. Then we'll talk about how the virus enters cells by using glycans. And then we we'll see the main part, which is how bioinformatics help bringing together uh, virology and glycobiology. So without further ado, we start with the effect of glycan on vaccines. We start with the case of measles, for which we have a very potent vaccine since more than 50 years. So what does a vaccine? It makes, um, it induces antibodies in uh, in your blood that will, that will bind to the surface of the virion and neutralize it. So what is important is the surface molecule of the virion to make the vaccine. And here we see for measles, we have the hemagglutinin, which is uh, this structure. And in gray, you have the viral molecule. And in blue, you have the glycans. So you have to know that glycans are not synthesized by the virus itself. It, it uses uh, host glycans. So here we have human glycans. So these human molecules are completely neutral. This is the immune system. So here you see this part in blue will not be really detectable by immune system, but these other parts are completely available to antibodies. And that's one of the reasons the vaccine works like a charm. <clears throat> Also, um, measles do not mutate much, so uh, the same vaccine is still available 50 years ago and you are protected for your life. It's not the case of other viruses which use glycan as shield, and we'll see uh, the case of influenza and HIV. The influenza virus uh, surface glycoprotein is called hemagglutinin, and here it is. You see that there are much more glycan at the surface uh, of this um, molecule, it's only four to six, but actually they are all over the place, which already makes the uh, antibody job to binding the viral part much more difficult. But on top of that, influenza is able to mutate. So you see here in yellow, the glycan over the influenza hemagglutinin, and you see in 1918, <coughs> the first appearance of H1N1, there was no glycan at the top, but then in 1977, the virus mutated to bring a glycan shield at the top. So the, the explanation is that presumably people that survive this virus devolve, uh, evolve antibodies against this top. And the virus, by mutating and putting a glycan shield on top of this, he escaped this antibody so he can infect a person which has already seen that virus. So, by mutating over the years, you see in 2007, there is different kind of glycan as well. In 2009 uh, also, the virus is able to reinfect people which had previous uh, immunity. So for this, the vaccine is working uh, not as much as uh, measles, and you have to change pretty much every year uh, the composition because the virus is changing very much. The second example is um, HIV. Uh, with the surface glycoprotein is also covered with glycan. Then much more, you have 26 to 30 glycan for every subunit, which is huge. So it's really a big glycan shield over the, the, the virus molecule. And <clears throat> on top of that, uh, HIV is able to mutate uh, even faster than influenza. So it's going to move around the glycan as well. So it makes the vaccine extremely difficult to do. And in 30 years, we're unable to make vaccine against this virus. And the reason is presumably the glycans. <clears throat> so what we think there is that the glycan uh, is of major importance in, uh, in this feature, in vaccine design. <clears throat> And uh, but we could, by predicting the number of glycan of any emerging virus pathogen, predict if uh, vaccine will be like measles or going to be more difficult like HIV. So viruses exploit glycans as well to enter into the cells. So we take the example of, of influenza in the following presentation. Um, this is a surface of a lung, which influenza is a, infecting and now we are talking about the glycan which are on the cell okay and 
we will see how we, we represent this glycan uh, actually. Well, let me first start with the fact that there are synonyms to the word glycan. We use sugar, we use carbohydrate, we use polysaccharides. But all you've got to remember is that it's a sort of complicated molecule and an assembly of building blocks which are called monosaccharides, like salic acid is one, and acetylgalactosamine is one, galactose is one. And to simplify the understanding of these molecules and maybe the depiction of these molecules, there's a new, not, uh, somehow recent notation, which is called uh, the SNFG notation, which represents each of these binding blocks, these monosaccharides, as um, cartoons, so little icons, so a green for mannose. So this N-acetylglycosamine that is here is a um, yellow square, so that in the end, this is the molecule depicted in this nomenclature, and that is much simpler to represent sugars. So we are going back at the cell surface, and now with the sugar, with the, what uh, Frederick told us about the representation of it. So we see we have many sugars, and we have a, a gm 3 glioside which will be the target for influenza to enter. Actually, VASC has to bind special molecules that will trigger the entry. So here we see influenza is binding to silic acids on top of any molecules. So it's pretty in the vicinity of the cell, and kind of, uh, of um, a way to, uh, to favorize the, the binding of a very close molecule, which is not so much accessible, actually. So when you gain access to it, it will trigger the entry and the virus will infect your lung cell. So you see in all these processes, the virus only binds glycans. So it's all about the virus-glycan interaction. And this is most important uh, for, uh, for, for monitoring influenza to study this because as we've seen before, the vaccine is efficient, but not so much. We have to change the vaccine. So it's not a definitive solution like measles. Um, having ant antivirals would be very uh, potent. Again, this entry could be very efficient. So the study of this virus-glycan interaction is essential. So our focus is really to look at the cell surface and to consider what are the bioinformatics tools that are available to um, understand the viral activity, especially in the context of glycosylation. We actually, Philippe and I, co-authored a recent review on, these, on this landscape of bioinformatics, and we do see bioinformatics as first a means of exploring the knowledge that we have and that is not connected between virology and glycobiology, and also to potentially then discover new correlation between viral activity and glycosylation. Um, Viralzone is a website dedicated to bring together the textbook knowledge, um, the variant pictures and the many data from PubMed, will um, bioinformatic resource and sequence data, like we have in Uniprot, in SDC, like GeneBank, MBL, and many other resources. So this is to give an access to user of together the knowledge on all the data and database that they can have access to in the same site. Um, in Varzone, we have several pages for each virus. This is for influenza, the one we get, with uh, the variant, the genome, and many features you see. We have a lot of links to other resources, including uh, resources talking about cell receptor, which are the silic acid, which is sugar bind. So if, if you actually click on sugar bind, you are sent to um, a query page with the answers to this query of influenza. And you see that you have a number of different strains with here the glycan no, uh, in short, uh, string description, but I'll explain uh, how it's connected to, to the icons that I've shown before. Uh, this is in the database SugarBind, so that is developed by Julien Marietto, 
and the record is pretty long. And you see that you have also some uh, stars here that describe the uh, information uh, regarding affinity of the glycan that are actually bound. And we have, uh, in this context of glycobiology and bioinformatics, so we focus on these glycans. So here uh, you have the, uh, the, this notation, simple notation, and we go back to our Alcone notation. And you can click on this record to have more details about this particular glycan ligand. And you have, of course, the citation of the articles that describe this binding. You have the properties of the ligands that are described as well. And you also have some information about the context where, so we have in the database 67 different strains of influenza uh, and the ligands that are described and also the tissues, so the affected uh, area, of course the disease. And we also have some interesting connection with the structures where these binders are found exact so here we have five structures where you can see this little motif that was in the pre, uh, previous page that is included in a full structure and these full structures if you click on them you get to another database which is called glyconnect and in glyconnect you have the information between this structure and the receptor or the protein, the glycoprotein on which it is actually attached. So you can click on the protein and you will learn that this is on a mucin. Mucin are the major component of mucosa. And you can see that if you click on tissue, you are actually in the lung mucosa. So that makes sense that this particular binding uh, I mean, glycan ligand is uh, attached part of a sugar that is attached on a mucin. So we can make sense of the information that we have. We can also use another database, which is called Unilectin, which is specialized, developed by Francois Bernardel and Anne and Berti in, uh, in cooperation with Anne in Grenoble. And this is focused on the 3D aspect of these um, uh, of the lectin so the hemagglutinin in our case and this is the uh, influenza hemagglutinin with the sugar sticking out and you can have very detailed atomic level details of the binding that is actually all uh, centralized in unilectin and here this is all extracted from PDB and with this uh, record for, for this particular example. So in the end, we are trying to depict a landscape of bioinformatics resources that are, you have the central role of viral zone, which is really describing attachment and entry of viruses. So you have sugar bind and unilectin that are giving information about the hemagglutinins and which sugar they actually binding to and uh, the details at atomic level with unilectin. Then you have also the relationship between uniprot and nexprot for human hosts and the glycoproteins that are described there or the viral proteins. And for the glycoproteins, you have details of the sugars that are sitting on the glycoproteins through Glyconnect, and all these resources are developed at SIB. So we acknowledge a few people in viral zone for, uh, in proteomics, in, pro, uh, in the proteome informatics group, and we have our glyco advisors for all the resources that we are developing under the glycomics at Exposy initiative. And we have our Swiss prot liaison, Elisabeth Gasteiger, and funding. And we thank you for your attention. <laughs>